How do you choose a color scheme for your art or, more importantly, for a scene in your comic? Well, I guess let's start with the basics of color schemes and color theory. There's a few little, little guys you can choose from when you are choosing a color scheme. They all have their strengths and weaknesses. It just depends on what you're going to do, what effect you want, and you can use a variety of them depending on what tone you want for your scene, and you can use different ones all over your comic. So these different schemes are as follows. <laughs> First, there is monochromatic, which means like it's one color, it's various hues, not hues, it's various tints and shades of one hue. So say you have a red as your base, you can do a whole bunch of like darker versions of that red or lighter versions of that red, as long as they're all within the same hue, and that's all you use, that's monochromatic. Next you have complementary, which is when you have, if you, you're looking at your little color wheel, complementary color schemes include colors that are opposite on the color wheel. So if you're you're choosing a red, the complementary color is green. With blue, the complementary is orange, etc. There's many other combos. <laughs> Um, complementary colors are great when you want to, say, draw focus to something, you know? If you have, say, a large part of your, say, illustration is red, if you want to draw attention to something, it's great to use a splash of green. Though, be careful with complementary, because it's very easy for complementary colors to cancel each other out. So, for example, if you mix red and green, they become like a brownie gray. They can really kill the vibrancy in each other. Be careful to balance things out so that it doesn't all look gray and mid-tone and gross. Be weary. And then there's analogous color schemes. Analogous colors are just colors that are close to each other on the color wheel. So for example, blue and purple, or blue and green, or red, orange, and yellow. They are all colors that are close to each other. So like, yeah. <laughs> um, so if you have blue as your main color, if you choose like a green and a purple, that's an analogous color scheme. There are a few other combos and ways you can mix these. For example, I think it's called triadic or triad color schemes, where you grab a bunch of analogous colors. So let's say a blue, a purple, and a green as your main colors, but you want to draw focus to something, so you go ahead and you grab an orange to do that little complementary pop against your blue. So that's the basic of like choosing pleasing color schemes. If you follow those rules, you'll generally have something that's pretty good. Following that, you want to make sure that you have the right value of these colors. <laughs> um, I talked a little bit about it in my previous video last week about grayscale comics. But basically, wait, did I? Or did I talk about it in the live stream? Anyways, recently I talked about it. Maybe I should recap here. So yeah, you want to make sure you have a good range of value within your color scheme. You want to make sure that you have a highlight, meaning a very light color, your lightest color in fact. Um, you'll want shadows, which will be your darkest colors, and you want to be careful with your mid-tones, which are colors that are very much in the middle of the light to dark spectrum. So like, if you have your little Photoshop window open of your colors, that little square, anything that's like through the middle of that square, that's a mid-tone. Be weary of them. <laughs> Be careful where you use them because they can kill your contrast. It's very important to have contrast when you're working with your colors so that things stand out. So it's best to match highlights with shadows and make sure that there is lots of contrast. How do I describe this properly? Um, <laughs> contrast is important for readability. It is how you can show the forms in your work. So make sure that your colors aren't all the same value because when they are, it can lead to very boring color schemes. It can lead to color schemes where it's hard to tell things apart because they all look the same if you took the color away. Um, so be careful with those. Make sure that you've got a good balance of highlights and shadows and a few mid-tones. So that's the basics of color schemes. Now, how do you choose which color 
to use or which scheme to use. Well, when you're going into your comic and you have a scene that you're working on, it's best to start with the emotion that needs to be portrayed. So even if, say, you have like a scene that takes place at night or a scene that takes place in the rain, um, so if it's at night, you know, obviously you'll probably go towards like blacks or purples or blues. Um, in the rain, you're probably going to go towards blues. If it's, say, an autumn day in your comic, you're going to go towards, like, reds and oranges and yellows. However, it's best to start with the emotion because any one of those things, so, like, whether it's a night scene with all your purples and blues, a rainy scene with all your blues, or a fall scene with all your reds and stuff, those colors can be, like, amazingly different depending on the tone you want to go with. So, for example, if you have a rainy scene, but it's, like, a happy rainy scene, um, you can use very, like, pastel-y bright blues, or you can use some greens to make it feel fresh, um, versus, say, a sad scene that takes place in the rain, you might want to use, like, dark blues and indigos to make it really deep and moody and rich. So you can see why it's really important to begin with the emotion of the scene and really pull your colors from there. Now there's a whole bunch of stuff about like the psychology behind colors, which I totally recommend you look into because it's really fun to read about, but you will definitely already have a pretty good working knowledge of it, I'm assuming. You know, if you think of the color red, there's certain emotions that are attached to that, whether it's like love or passion or anger or evil, um, you know, colors have emotions associated with them. So depending on what the emotional tone of your scene is, that's a great place to start. If it's sad, you know, you've got your blues. If it's happy, you've got your, like, your pinks and yellows and greens. Those are all really happy. Just depends on what you want to do with your scene. So once you have an idea of what you want to do, so let's say I'm doing this sad rainy scene, right? Um, and I'm picking my colors for it. So my main color is probably going to be blue. I'd always recommend picking a main color when you are choosing a color palette because it's what you're going to base all the other colors off of. So I've got this sad scene, I'm going to pick a blue, and that's where I start. So it's like, okay, for my shadows, I probably want to grab like some deeper blues, probably throw some purple in because that'll make them feel darker and richer. So those will be my shadows. For my highlights, I'm probably going to grab like a more cyan blue, so something that's a little bit brighter. Maybe not. Maybe I'll go with like maybe some more silvery blues um, so that things don't get too bright because I want it to feel nice and sad and moody. Um, and so yeah, that's a nice analogous color scheme. Now, um, because it's in the rain, a lot of stuff is probably going to be tinted blue. So how do I make my characters stand out or important objects in the scene stand out? Well, it'd be great to use an orange or maybe like an orangey brown. Um, or a reddish orange, anything like that. So maybe I'll color my character in some red clothing um, or some orange clothing, I mean, to make them contrast with it. <laughs> so to walk through my thought process there, I started with my main color, then I chose a scheme that worked really well with it, in this case, like um, analogous with a nice little complimentary pop. It really just depends on what you want to do. <laughs> Oh boy. Does this make sense? Holmes, does this, does it, does it? I feel like whenever I talk about comics, my, my advice usually comes down to like, what is the tone of your scene? Build it from there. That's honestly like the best place you can start. As long as you understand like what you're trying to convey emotionally to your reader, that's, that's like where you want to be. <laughs> it's just finding the best way to portray that. And the same thing goes for color palettes. Um, if you're ever not sure about what kind of color palette you want to choose, like say you know what the emotion of the scene is, um, you just can't figure out the right color on your own, it's totally okay to go grab references. In fact, always go grab references. Go to films you like, illustrations you like, people generate color palettes all the time and just have them out there for you to grab. So go check those out. Find one that really suits the mood of your scene and just build it out from there. Make sure that you're getting your shadows and your highlights all nice and delicious. And there you go. <laughs> it's totally okay to, to use reference even in color. So yeah, I hope that is helpful for choosing colors for your scenes. I guess for like 
small tips for when you're coloring as well. These are things that I learned when I was like working on a color comic. Some little some little tips for when you're beginning with this stuff. Um, avoid using black for your shadows. It'll make everything look really gray and washed out and icky looking and muddy. So avoid using black for your shadows at all costs. Um, I'd recommend using, you know, an array of like rich browns and purples and blues for your shadows. And I'd also recommend staying away from using white for all your highlights. Um, you know, use desaturated bright versions of the colors you're using, but overlaying white on top will also lead to a very muddy, kind of boring color palette. Um, and as always, make sure that your contrast is really good. Um, oh, also, don't shy away from vibrant colors, but make sure that there's a good mix of colors, too. If all of them are vibrant, that can be bad. If they're all of them are really gray or washed out, that can also be bad. So make sure you've got a good variety of values and tones. I think that's all I have. Thank you so much for listening. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. If you ever want to take a look at my comics, you can visit our Ticktail store um, or our Gumroad store. They're in the description down below. And finally, if you'd like more videos about web comics and making comics, please subscribe. We have much more cool content coming your way. Alrighty. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.